Sonic the Hedgehog has seen much criticism, deserved or not, for many reasons throughout his illustrious career. One of the most frequent, however, is the overabundance of side characters, a criticism which I find strange, considering a lot of his contemporaries also have weird, useless editions and smurfettes and other TV tropes lingo. Remember TV tropes? I remember TV tropes. Talk about a real callback. Am I right, fellow internet critics? If I were to venture a guess as to why this hatred is so severe, it would be because of how prominent they were featured in core titles of the series, Adventures 1 and 2, Heroes and 06 being the primary titles that codified this Sonic and his annoying furry friends argument. So that led me to ask the question, who's the most hated Sonic character? Again, only in relation to the core games. I'm sure some folk out there could make an argument for someone like Chris Thorndike from Sonic X or Evil Sonic from the Archie comics, but I do not have the patience to sit through and reread the Archie comics and dissect those. Right now. After that break and I say right now, I have like ominous, like an ominous like don't. After a meticulous splash dash patented analysis and consulting a team of experts, I can safely conclude that the most hated mainline Sonic character is... Omo Chow. Now this may not have been the most expected choice, considering that Elise is one of the most detested characters in the franchise, and that she is in what's considered to be the game that has ruined Sonic as a brand to the day of this upload. But you know, let's be real. She's voiced by Meg Griffin. Whoa, ahoy. So basically one of the best characters in the series. Comments closed. But first, you know what's anything but hated? Today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the top of the line VPN you can use to help yourself and stay safe while using the internet across all your major devices, such as Windows, Android, Mac, and so much more. With its amazing speed in over 59 available countries, you can easily in one click find a server near you for better speed or somewhere that you can get more content. For example, if I wanted to watch some of the original Sonic cartoons but didn't have access to them, then all I have to do is set my server to the US and now I can access them in Paramount Plus. With all these amazing features, and even some more such as anti-malware threat protection blocks, which blocks out intrusive ads and web trackers, why wouldn't you want to give NordVPN a try? Especially when you can get an exclusive deal right here at nordvpn.com slash splashdash, where you can get a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. So once again, that's nordvpn.com slash splashdash, and thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Most would probably look to a character like Big the Cat or Charmy B as the most reviled, and I would agree with you if this were 15 years ago. In our recent era of ironic humor, a character like Big has gone from nothing more than an unfunny overused joke to point out how bad Sonic friends are, to an unfunny overused joke for people to point out how much they love him despite all this. Not to mention how much the furry side of the community loves Big. Really, really loves him. And a character like Charmy could certainly get on someone's nerves in a game like Sonic Heroes, even if I find it charming. Uh, uh, see, like, like his name, I never got that before. But I'd argue that ever since these YouTube reviewer arguments got so common to the point where Sega started actually listening to them, and delegated half of the extended cast to nothing more than occasional appearances and crowd shots with no plot significance, a character like Charmy has gone from being potentially annoying to just... just, just there, I guess. You can't make fun of our characters if we don't give them a personality. That'll show them. Other than those two, I can't really think of anyone with a massive vitriolic reaction to them. Yimmy? Cream, maybe? Everyone else is either disregarded or rouge, and then someone makes a funny and original bet tits joke. So, um, yeah, Momo Chow. This little tutorial character made his first appearance in Sonic Adventure 2. If you walked into him, it'd give you instructions and tips on how to play the game. Nothing too egregious, but boy did fans sure think so, especially if you were an animator on Sonic Paradox. His shtick is that he was just kind of the announcer in the menus, friendly and affable, give advice, and even revealing secrets no one should know. Did you know the doctor's mustache is fake? They were fake? Of course they were fake! Other than that, you could pick him up, throw him, attack him, and if you did enough, he would stop giving you help. Hell, you could straight up kill him and throw him off into a bottomless pit. I can't believe you can just murder this robot. It's a kid's game. I don't say, like, this is a kid's game. What the fuck, dude? This is a kid's game. Yeah, These Japanese so kids Dude, would you sh shut, shut the fuck up I'm talking here. I remember when Team Sonic Racing came out, and Takashi Izuku was talking about how he wanted to make a unique character to be the announcer for all these Sonic spin-offs in the future. And while I was clamoring at my screen, shouting, y you already have one of those, he was too busy trying to sell us all on... D Dadompa.
remember this classic character? Can't wait to see him return. Otherwise, that's all there really was in Would Be Domachow. He's just the tutorial guy. Tells you how the game works and shit. Nothing more, nothing less. From then on, Omuchao would appear in numerous Sonic titles, becoming one of the more frequently recurring characters in the series. Which is strange, considering that people don't really notice. Like, if you count the titles he's in, it's actually a pretty high amount. Even more than, like, the Chaotix, even. Isn't that crazy? In fact, who even made him? I'm not talking, like, in lore in the game. I I've looked and I cannot find any sort of credit or interview citing his creation. And even then, in the game's lore, who the fuck made him? Was it Eggman? Teals? Those are the only two canonical inventors, Azuka. So which one? Who brought him to life? Was it Gerald? Did, did he make him before he got shot? If I were to venture a guess for why Omochao was put in here on Sonic Team's part, I can only assume that they wanted another tutorial character like the first adventure game, but couldn't use Takao like last time because that bitch is fucking dead. While people were definitely annoyed by him in SZ2, like, Jesus, I'm a fucking 40 year old man, I can play this children's game well enough in my own Sega. Jeez. Oh, I'm, I'm 40, by the way. That's a splash dash fun fact for you. It wasn't until Heroes where I'd agree that his presence got way too intrusive. See, Sonic Heroes somehow manages to have a perfect example of both a good tutorial and a bad tutorial. You could normally access it from the menu, and if you want to learn the game's mechanics, you had the choice to. Granted, it's a lot of stop and go because the game takes control from you to explain the mechanics, but it does a good job at explaining them. The fact that it's optional is also great. If you're not playing Team Rose, that is. Sonic Heroes, as we all know, has four teams to pick from, each representing a different level. Team Sonic, Normal, Dark, Hard, Rose, Easy, Chaotix, Misery. But with Team Rose, Sonic Team expects your little babies and forces you to do the tutorial. And if you're like me, you probably played the teams from left to right, because that's the right direction. So by that time, you'd have already played the difficulties higher than Team Rose. It it's such a weird decision. Why not just... Give me a prompt or something suggesting I play the tutorial, and if I feel like my dumb little boy brain can't handle it, I'll go and do it. It's so dumb. Seaside Hill with Team Sonic is the most perfect introduction you can give to this game. I think even people who, for some bizarre, incorrect reason, don't like Sonic Heroes could agree on that. It cleverly explains to you each and every new mechanic they have, from the team-based gameplay, the leveling up system, and most importantly, encouraging you to use different formations to go off the beaten path where you'll be rewarded with an item box. Really smart level design. Almost killed Takashi Azuka, true story. But despite this, you know, having a wonderful tutorial that excellently explains to you how to play the game without breaking up the flow, they also decide to force you to play the tutorial from the options menu when you begin Team Rose's playthrough. Where you cannot take four fucking steps without this shithead jumping in to inform you how his day is going. And this right here is where I think a lot of the hate for him started to come from. At least in SA2, I could keep playing while he babbled to me. And at least if he were getting too obnoxious, I could kick his non-existent teeth in. What were the other reasons people had, though? It couldn't possibly be his design, I fucking love it. Even if, again, it does beg the question as to who built this thing. But another reason I hear is his voice being annoying. And so upon doing some digging, I made a couple interesting discoveries. Other than in Sonic Riders, where he was voiced by Elisa Jacqueline, each voice actor for Omochao was also voicing another character at the same time. I can only assume that because it was such a minor role, it's easier just to get someone who's already in the booth to do the lines, instead of casting and paying someone to play just Omochao, you know, he's not that important. But in Adventure 2, he was voiced by Lina Minnelli, who was also the voice actress for none other than Rouge the Bat, and Void. Not to mention miscellaneous stuff like the menu voice and Twinkle Park announcer. But she was even busier with Sonic, as she was also the voice recording director for both Adventure Games, Shuffle, Heroes, and Advance 3. Quite the resume. Although none of that compares to her greatest role of Bubsy in Bubsy 3D. Yep, same voice actress. From after Heroes, the mantle was taken by Rebecca Hong, who voiced a lot of characters in Sonic X, such as Cream, Cheese, Vanilla, Tikal, and Maria. Then after that was taken over by Laura Bailey, who also played Blizz, and also is married to Travis Willingham, who voiced Knuckles from Freeriders all the way until Forces. It's a small world. And finally, our current demo Chow is played by Erica Lindbeck, who also picked up the role of Blaze the Cat. Dude, Sonic voice actors are complicated. I'm not opening that can of worms for a while. Anyways, I don't find his voice that's annoying. That's where I was going with all this. <laughs> After Heroes, Amu Chao's presence was far less pronounced. You could shoot him from a gun in Shadow the Hedgehog? That's cathartic. His last real mainline entry was Lost World, where he gave you stupid missions or something. He too, another victim of the Sega side character exodus. 
While he's still a prominent character in the comics, he's largely gone from the games due to fan backlash, I assume. The last game he was properly treated as a tutorial gimmick in was Generations, and even then they had the foresight to let you disable him. But even then, I still don't quite understand the hatred for this old dude. At worst, he's just like, a minor inconvenience. Except for in Heroes, he was relatively easy to avoid and not interact with. And yet he garnered this massive hatedom to the point where the official LEGO Dimensions tie-in is dogpiling on the tiny bastard. When you arrive at Marble Zone, you run into Omo Chow, who throughout the entire stage follows you around spotting useless information. You could definitely tell that the guys at Traveler's Tales were huge fans of Sonic with all these deep cuts they throw in. But the entire level has him follow you around with Sonic being clearly bothered by his presence. Which is funny for sure and works in a non-canon spin-off like this, but I don't really want this to be the way he always is from now on. Having him still be annoying except winking at the camera every time he does it doesn't make him any better. Sadly though, I think we're going to be seeing this overly hyper-conscious of his reputation personality for Omo Chow in the future. At least in the rare time he shows up. Like, for the 25th anniversary, a bunch of comics were made to highlight certain characters in Japan, and when translated, the Omochao one is just the same joke again, pointing out the obvious. I mean, just look at what happened to Big the Cat. Game Grumps memeing him for one playthrough and suddenly he's the star of Sonic's ironic social media takeover. What a sad legacy. I just think it's kind of tragic and unfair. He may have been mildly annoying, but ultimately, he just wanted to help you. He got no reward for that. And this is how you treat him? You'll start singing the praises of Big the Cat and buy his shitty froggy shirt off the Sega store, but you'll let Omo Chow sit in the corner and rot, decay, turn to dust? Absolutely disgusting. I'm ashamed to be associated with people who hate someone whose sole desires to make your life easier, to help you. Yet, in spite of your deplorable actions, you know, I'm a humble gamer. I'm compassionate. I will give you the chance to spin dash onto the road of redemption, and I will provide the scripted boost pads to lead the way. If you feel remorse for your actions to this poor unsung hero, simply tweet out a heartfelt apology or type it here in the comments. Let us forgive, let us move forward, and embrace our little tin toy soldier. Omo Chow.